Hey everybody, how you doing? This is uh, William Paul Liggett from uh, Junk Text, and uh, so today what you're going to learn how to do is um, install and use what's referred to as an IDE, okay, which stands for an Integrated Development Environment. Now, uh, this is the tie-in with my uh, other lecture series talking about Java programming, but one of the things I might, so what we're going to go over is installing and using uh, an IDE called NetBeans. Um, it's one of my favorite IDEs, uh, primarily because I'm also a, you know, I'm a full stack web developer and I like to deal with other languages and so forth. So uh, in addition to being very useful in the, uh, the Java programming language, you can also use it for, you know, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, uh, PHP, for you C um, and C++ programmers, that's very useful. Um, so it's a very, you know, collective, you know, uh, very useful IDE experience. Um, you might be wondering, well, what is an IDE? Why do I care about it? What's, what's what? Um, so first and foremost, just so you understand before you get off track is you do not need an IDE to do any programming, okay? You can literally just use what's referred to as like a text editor such as something like uh, Notepad on, say, Windows, or uh, TextEdit on on a Mac system, or if you're using, you know, like a, a Linux, or if you say GNU slash Linux, same thing. There's, um, you could use what's referred to as, you know, uh, GEdit, or Vim, or Emacs. There's, there's lots of uh, text editors out there. Um, the thing with an IDE is it basically helps uh, it helps you program, okay? It's um, it, it will find if you have any weird things in your of how you're writing code. It's gonna let you know. It's gonna put like a red squiggly line under uh, under something. Like, what did you? Just, what is this? You know, it's gonna highlight things that may not jump out at to you if you're just using only your eyeballs, okay? And so, um, you know, it jumps out in color and things of that nature, and it can it puts it all the it integrates it. That's why they call it an integrated development environment to make it easier. Um, I'm also going to go over some other IDEs that are out there. So, uh, you know, in case you can't, for for instance, depending on your system, maybe you can't install uh, NetBeans for some reason. Um, you can, uh, I'll point to some, you know, uh, different IDEs that are out there. There's also online versions, like basically a, a website that you just, in your browser, you're just coding. Um, so that's pretty cool. So, um, but, uh, yeah, so this is, it's going to help to set you up so that you can be able to get off the ground faster, uh, to make the programming experience, uh, less frustrating right away. Um, okay. So let's get into it. All right. So, like I said, we're going to go over the aspect of how to install, um, NetBeans uh, 11.3, that's the uh, latest version uh, that I'm looking at right now. Um, it's maintained by the uh, the Apache group. Uh, they they do, uh, they manage lots of different uh, software projects, actually. Uh, the most famous is their Apache web server. Anyways, uh, NetBeans is a very respected uh, uh, IDE, which, uh, remember, that stands for an Integrated Development Environment. Um, so to go through the process of installing it, you go to their homepage here, um, which uh, there, if you can see up here, the uh, link is netbeans.apache.org. Um, so, or you could just search for netbeans. Anyways, um, once their homepage loads up, you go to just where you know to download, and install. But it's not as simple as it might seem. Uh, they honestly need to update their site a little bit more to make this maybe a little more clear cut. Um, but in any case, here we go right here. So I'm going to download the latest, greatest version here, uh, the main one on top. Um, I'm going to click this download link. And then there's lots of different links here. There's lots of words you can read and so forth. One of the things that did jump out to me, uh, which will, you know, once you understand Java technologies a little bit more, you'll 
watch for these things in the future as well. But it says right here that <clears throat> the installers will not run under uh, JDK 14 because of some technical problem. Okay, so that's important because uh, a little later in this video, I'll actually tell you not to install the JDK 14. Okay, so th and that's why. So with that being the case, the easiest process to go through. Now I'm using Microsoft Windows um, to make this video and demonstrate this, uh, just because a lot of people use Windows. Um, I'm using Windows 10. I I actually use uh, another system for day-to-day -day purposes. I use a, a Ubuntu Linux, um, but you know, there's a somewhat kind of similar process. It, it can actually be a little easier to install NetBeans on Linux because you can kind of skip over a step. Um, but regardless, the easiest process right here is you click this link, okay, So because it says Windows, the X64, what that's referring to, it, that's a 64-bit operating system. And so I'm going to click on that, and all modern operating systems today are 64-bit. Uh, currently and so here's this link that it's pointing me to I can go to this uh, one of their mirror sites that they pointed out um, the thing is I've, already, I've actually already downloaded NetBeans I didn't want you waiting a minute for me to download some file um, with the video uh, they also do suggest and it's also a really good process to go through and actually verify the download I'm not going to do it in this video because it gets into another subject using uh, PGP which is also referred to as pretty good privacy, which is actually a really good privacy system, actually. Um, it's similar to PKI, but it's decentralized. Um, so this is a, a good way to help verify that the file is 100%. Uh, there's nothing, there's nothing, uh, n no malicious code, um, or, you know, maybe it's just not corrupted. Um, and anyhow, so... We're going to pretend that I clicked on this link here, okay? So I'm just going to jump over to my download section where I've actually already downloaded the file here. And it, you can see here it says Apache NetBeans, da da da, dot exe. So, right, I'm going to go through and try to install this, okay? And boom, Windows is asking, you know, hey, do you want to, do you want to actually install this? Now, before you just click yes, I'm also just noticing that it says verified publisher is the Apache Software Foundation. So this gives me a a lot more trust because these are crypt cryptographically uh, signed um, install packages actually there's actually kind of a process to go through and get vetted for somebody to even show up on this verified publisher thing so that gives me a little more comfort anyways I'm gonna click yes and the thing is their little prompt here is pretty small okay even on my you know this like what you're reading here if you can't make it out it's basically an error message and it says in short that it's like oh the JDK 8 or newer is required for installing the NetBeans IDE blah 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 make sure that the JDK is installed and that's the thing so I'm gonna actually go through to install NetBeans you you need to actually install what's referred to as the JDK okay but that stands for the Java Development Kit alright now the thing is there's actually choices in this regard of which JDK you want to install. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this. All I can do now is exit the installer, which means I can't do anything yet. And so that's actually what I'm going to walk you through here on uh, to understand more the aspect of Java technologies, okay? Just so you, you know, if you want to be a Java programmer, this is a very key point to understand. For instance, job interviews may actually ask you about this. Like you should know this this thing that I'm about to go into. Anyhow, so if I just search for, so I'm using DuckDuckGo, which is like Google, um, but it doesn't track you and such. Anyways, if I type in Java and I press enter, now the first link that like normal web page that shows up is here. It just says Java.com. Okay. So I'm going to click that. This is, you know, a legitimate Java. That's one of the main sites. Um, and if you go through this process of, say, Java download and, and things like this, 
this is what you're going to get into in the territory. This is how to actually install, like, to run Java programs. This is what you'd want to go through, and I guess you could go this way to install Java. Um, now, this is not what we want, to be clear. Okay, I just want to be make this clear. This is not what we're trying to get because this is going to, so I'll click download. This is, so I click the download link. I just want to highlight. This, set, this starts with JRE. Okay, now that's the Java runtime environment. There's lots of acronyms with Java technologies, okay? So it can be a little obnoxious getting accustomed to everything. But basically for us who want to try to create Java programs, we need something much more than the Java runtime environment. Uh, the Java runtime environment is to run a Java program. But to actually create uh, or develop a Java program, that's where we need the Java development kit, okay? Um, we can go back and say, I look at this thing, Java Software Oracle. Um, I don't know, we can hunt this down somewhere. That basically, blah, 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 blah Java SE probably. Yeah. Go here, different downloads. Yes. Okay. So what I've just gotten us to, this is, um, so Java is maintained and managed by Oracle. They're a you know, big company, lots of different uh, applications that they manage and so forth. And they maintain uh, the, um, you know, there you can see here it says Oracle JDK. Now if we click on this, all right, so SE14 is their latest greatest, which, you know, by the way, I guess, would have problems potentially with NetBeans, so maybe I'll I'll back up anyways. Even if you're going to go this route, so for the version I was going with, say we we'll, we'll go JDK 13. All right, um, Oracle JDK, so on and so forth. The only thing is, what you want to understand, um, and I actually have another whole class on this. Basically, it's uh, something that I, you know, presented at. Uh, Libra Planet 2020 and so forth is actually understanding uh, software licenses because it pays it plays into a lot of different regards and with Java there's this kind of weird situation that that's out there it's a it's kind of an Oracle thing that they have going on that their license agreement um, for the the flagship Oracle JDK it's under what's referred to as this Oracle technology network license agreement blah 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 for Oracle SE if you say click on this one of the things that yes I'm showing you a bunch of legalese and most people just get blurry eyes just I, I don't know why are we gonna read this so and so forth. we're not gonna read the legalese what I'm actually gonna do is first of all I'll zoom in on the text okay I'm gonna scroll down a bit all right bear with me just for a half a second one of the things it says in this regard with the Oracle JDK, this is the regular standard flagship Oracle JDK, license restrictions. One of the things that sounds good, it's like, oh, you can use it for personal use and development use. All right, sounds good. That's pretty good. The only thing is, okay, what kind of throws things off, especially for me being a uh, an open source advocate, um, or you know, for those that prefer the, the, the term free software, same thing, that it says right here, this is always a look out for, that when, with the Oracle JDK, we are not allowed to reverse engineer any of the technology. Now, the, what, the reason why I'm highlighting on this aspect is that what this is saying is we cannot know how this technology works, right? Now, if you're just coming into it as a, uh, a novice, you have no idea about programming, code is... You've never dealt with it before, and now I'm already introducing the idea of reverse engineering and, and so forth. I'm not trying to get too advanced here. I'm just saying that one of the aspects with programming and code and a lot of other, you know, computing environments, stuff like that, is the all the technologies actually, a lot of technologies out there are actually a fully open source, okay, which means. Um, which you'll learn about later. Source code is actually how you see a program, how it works. Okay, as a very simple example, I'll show you later. 
here's like some very simple Java code that you're looking at here. Um, you can see this code. You can see how it works. It's nothing that sophisticated. It just asks for the person's name and it says hello to them. Um, so the thing is, you, you just have to go in mind if you install the Oracle JDK, you're kind of bound by it's. You're basically installing a, um, a proprietary technology. Now, if you have no qualms about that, you know, go for it, whatever. I just want to let you know that that's what you're dealing with. Um, so I'm gonna not do that. I am gonna do use what they even point in here. It says Oracle. Uh, so I click my back button, and it says Oracle also provides the latest Open JDK release under the open source GPL license. Okay, the GPL, it's um, properly referred to as the GNU General Public License GPL. Um, it's a software license that makes it so that the techno the software technology you download, everybody can see the code, they can see how it works, works, they can tinker with it, they can improve it. And the open JDK is like the foundation anyways for even this what I showed you before, the Oracle JDK. Um, so I apologize if you're getting confused already. We're gonna skip past all we're gonna move along a little bit further. Um, so if I you know click on this link, which I actually have another tab open to talk about this that um, say here blah 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 JDK, I don't know this website I'm gonna go to right here the, this is where I search for this is the open JDK it's a better kind of summary of what this whole open JDK is all about so and so forth um, this is why I'm saying like if you want to be a Java programmer you need to understand the difference between the open JDK and the regular Oracle JDK. They're actually different. You may not believe me. There's little subtleties. Uh, it's nothing, you know, it's not that, that unless you're getting into the weeds of everything, you probably wouldn't notice. They're just, just generally different in how that you use, uh, how they're put together and so forth. And anyhow, this is why it's a bit confusing because Oracle, as I showed you before, they have, uh, not the site, well what I showed you before is the Oracle JDK that is referred to as proprietary technology um, you know it's, there's nothing wrong with this, it's not bad or evil it's just you don't know how it exactly works the only thing is that uh, it's all even the Oracle JDK is actually based upon this thing that's called the Open JDK now this is the open source technology everybody around the world can see how this code works and so forth and you can definitely go through and install it through this process there's, there's ways to you know download and install uh, these types of they have instructions and they have build setup and so forth there's also other um, efforts by other people that basically look at the open JDK project and they're trying to make it um, you know long-term support there's other things like that that goes into these kind of community efforts or even if they're not community like they can be commercial companies and so forth that that put together kind of a more cohesive open JDK kind of, kind of situation and so let me kind of point you to those aspects all right that's actually what I'm gonna go through myself here is I'm gonna show you that for me I am using I'm gonna use and you don't have to use this yourself I'm gonna use what's referred to as Zulu the Zulu open JDK now this is a company that's um, called Azul systems they have they actually have enterprise things that you can spend lots of money on to to get more support and things of that nature that um, if you really want to depend on the open JDK technology for mission critical systems and stuff like that it might be in, in, in your interest to to use their their services rather than like you know kind of only tracking what is on the open JDK type website that's out here um, and what I went into into Zulu here is um, the area where it's like the Zulu community all right and this is the download section for here now so anyways I'm gonna go actually go through and they're talking about how they maintain um, 
these builds with the open JDK and so forth for different systems and such now for me since I'm currently using Windows 10 I'm gonna scroll down there's lots of options here don't get too confused a lot of them are basically the same the only difference is I'll zoom in a little bit more maybe uh, maybe I'll stop there so it doesn't get kind of crazy with the layout um, the very first thing that jumps out is Linux okay that's another operating system if you're not familiar with Linux that's not what we want in this situation I'm going to keep scrolling oh there's a different kind of Linux thing no nope, that's not what we want Windows here we go right so we would want maybe this one the only thing remember that the whole point of us this whole video that I'm going through is install NetBeans right now when we look back at NetBeans, remember I downloaded this. I'm looking at the Apache website. If I click my back button, and how I told you this error, this uh, warning message that's saying, "Hey, don't try to use it with the JDK 14." This is what I mean by where this stuff jumped out to me of like, "Oh, okay, now I know what not to do." So in that case, I'm gonna go and see how these all start with like 14. So it's telling me that this is built against the latest greatest um, JDK or open JDK um, version 14 but since I'm dealing I want NetBeans to work I'm gonna skip that for now and say I'll go with 13 okay so now I'm in Java 13 again the same situation goes oh the first choice is Linux in this regard we don't care about it this one's also another kind of Linux nope skip that Oh, here we go for Windows. All right, boom. Now, if you're using a Mac system, you'd want to come down here, right? It says Mac OS. That's what they like to go by now, um, which is actually an old term. Anyhow, there's two choices. There's not that big of a deal either way. The easiest one to deal with probably is actually this MSI. It's, it's actually an installer. Um, and so I've actually already downloaded this ahead of time. All right, so imagine I clicked on this link. Okay, I clicked and dragged. Anyways, I clicked on the link. Now, for me, my download section is here. I have not installed it yet because I wanted to show you that error message when I was, you know, trying to install Apache NetBeans. Okay, so you you understood why you got that error message. Now, okay, so this thing is downloaded. All right, it's about 178 megs. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna download the. Or I'm gonna install it now. So I'm double clicking. The Zulu, you see JDK. This is the Open JDK. This is the overall point of this technology. Is this allows us to start actually creating Java programs? Okay. Okay. So, you know, typical next, next, next kind of a situation. Next, sounds great. Install it to this location. Wonderful. Install. Great. I'm checking Azul Systems, as I just mentioned, the company who manages Zulu, verified publisher, that sounds good. You can check for more details if you want, look at this uh, digital signature and so forth, but uh, I'm going to move on. Okay, it's installed the Zulu JDK. I'm going to click finish. And that's pretty much it. It looks like, it's like what happened? Where, where's my software? Where's it, where do I... Where do I start running Java code? That's the thing. It's a, This is a kind of behind the scenes kind of technology in a lot of sense. So, you know, I could actually show you. I'm going to go to my, I open my Windows thing. Say we look at uh, programs, add remove programs, whatever. That, say I scroll, my apps are loading up. I'll scroll all the way down. I think it's under Zulu. Yeah. So it says Zulu JDK, da 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 da, version 13. Um, so I know it's installed. Okay, I just want to let you know that I do have the technology installed. You can also check your your program files and so forth. Um, now, what we want to do in this regard is, I'm going to go back and I'm going to try to actually install NetBeans. Like, all right, seriously, I want to install NetBeans. Boom. Double click this. Yes, it's from the Apache uh, Foundation. Click yes. Whoa, we're getting somewhere now. Remember we had that error message? Now it's configuring. 
there's lots of choices here. I'm just going to like let it install everything. All right. Um, I don't know. Let me see. Customize. Let me just double check. Sounds great. I'm going to install everything. I'm a, you know, I like to, I'm a web developer too. So yes, I want PHP and stuff like that. If you don't care about web development, maybe you don't want it, but it's a good language too. PH Java and PHP are great languages. So I'm going to click next. Um, here's terms of service. Da, 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 da. This is actually in, under the Apache license. Now the Apache license version 2.0, this is actually open source software. Um, another term you might hear is actually called free software because it's talking about the freedoms involved. Um, so this is not proprietary software. We don't have to reverse engineer anything. The idea of reverse engineering, by the way, if you didn't know, is you're trying to figure out how something works. You don't know how it works, but you're trying to figure it out by like pulling a wire here or, you know, unplugging this there and stuff like that. And you can do that in code by like taking things apart. Well, this is all open source technology. You don't have to reverse engineer everything. All the code is out there. Okay. So it's like the opposite end of the spectrum. So I'm going to click this license screen. It sounds great. It gives me lots of freedoms and so forth. Wonderful. Uh, sure. Install it to these locations. Oh, and it's detected. Check it out. It says the JDK for the Apache NetBeans IDE. It needs to have this JDK. It's, it's the tools involved in actually making a Java program come together. Okay. So that's what we installed before. And in, in this case, I'm using Zulu. If you're using something else, that's fine. You know, you just need some workable JDK going on. Um, I'm going to click next. Uh, sure. You can also check for updates, I guess. Click install. It's going to go through kind of a process because there's a bunch of things I had it also installed too, such as like the uh, the web development, HTML5, and uh, JavaScript, and PHP um, capabilities. And, you know, you can make out, ooh, I can check out some of the tech backend technologies here. You know, I like to get bored and watch what these installers are doing. And I see all these these uh, files have this .gz extension. You can see really close, kind of tiny looking font. .gz is actually, uh, it's a kind of zip file, okay? Like if you zip a file on Windows, if you know how to do that. Well, this is similar. It's just using a different uh, zip encoding. Um that's uh, like gzip uh, that you would find on you know Linux and Unix environments and so forth so that's what they are actually using for this back end stuff um, and you can see there's like jar 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 so NetBeans the actual program we're going to be using the whole application a lot of it was written I think I don't know if all of it but most of it, as you can tell, it's packed into these jar files. Now, a jar file is a Java archive. It's honest. It's still. It's like a zip file. It's basically all it is. Zip files are like everywhere. You don't even realize it. Um, jar file is a container to put a Java program in, and so they made a Java zip file thing called a jar. And then they compressed it more, I guess. And that's where it says .gz eventually. Um, so I apologize. It is doing a little bit of updates here. This is great. You know, sorry for the slowness in the video here. I'll let it do its magic, I suppose. Um, so but these are good features to know, like, that it can auto-update itself. So that's that's actually great. You don't have to sit there and, like, go random places and re-download this whole process and stuff, right? Okay, that looks great. I'm going to click finish. Now, let's see here. I think, yes. Okay, so on my desktop, what I'm looking at is, this is Apache NetBeans, all right? So I'm going to double click on this. loading up here's like kind of splash screen stuff blah 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 you can kind of uh, take a tour look at things stuff like that we're gonna skip past that so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna create a very simple 
uh, program, okay? Um, a very simple Hello World program. Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to go to File, New Project. And then there's different options here. I'll just go with the default of Maven. It's it's like a build tool support thing, and there's different options. There's Maven, Gradle, and Ant. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just go with this Java, just kind of default Java application. It's just We're going to create what's called a console or a terminal application. Now, one of the things, I guess, to kind of save space and whatnot is it says, this feature is not yet enabled. Press next to activate it. So with actually me clicking next, it's going to go through this process of like making Java, like for me to use NetBeans to program in Java, it's going to like activate this kind of feature thing here. So... All right, that sounds great. Click next. It's not that hard. It's just going to do its process here. Um, and then, sounds great. I'll do that too. Whatever. Download and activate. Sure. Sounds good. Click next. License agreement. Oh, this is that GPL. So this is open source technology. Um, I accept. Now this Java FX technologies, I'll explain as we're kind of going along so you can learn. This is a, um, a flagship technology to create uh, graphical Java applications and so forth. Um, so yeah, but we're not going to get into it in this section. All right, I just want to let you know, you know, you want to learn as you go through this process of what you're looking at. And then I see NB, I'm assuming that's NetBeans. Um, so great, NetBeans, Java C, that's the Java compiler, I presume. And then I'm gonna click finish. And now it's finally activating Java SE. Now the SE, what that stands for, another interview tip, this stands for um, standard edition, <clears throat> which is like desktop style applications and so forth. Um, and name and company, da da da. So, I'll do what they like to do is this kind of reverse uh, domain name kind of thing. So, what I'll do is like my company is junktext.com. So, I'll be like com.junktext kind of a thing. And then I don't, that's kind of a weird sounding project name. I'm going to not call it Maven Project One. That sounds terrible. So, I'm going to change this to. I don't know, hello world. Okay. Um, I will click. Actually, let's see. I'll do it like that. I think. Okay, so I just renamed it. it. Doesn't matter what you call it. You could leave it Maven Project One if you wanted. Um, you want to come up with some name that you're gonna remember later. Uh, you can change it. Can be a little annoying to change these names. You got to do it in like a couple different places. So it is setting things up. There's some over here, basically getting everything situated. Now over on this side, this is what we want to see. It has a little cup here. Okay, this is looks like a little coffee cup. <laughs> the reason why it looks like a little coffee cup is Java is another like kind of slang term for coffee. Okay. So, I will click down from here. Say, there's a bunch of different folders here. Don't get too confused. Honestly, you can kind of ignore these other ones. But the one you really care about is one that says source packages. Okay? So, I'll click here. And then, com.junktext. Or, yeah, dot hello world. Da -da -da -da. So, this looks a little confusing right now. Let me get rid of this start page because I don't care about the start page thing. I'm going to X out of that. Um... What we'll do now is I'm going to go right click. Okay. This is my process. You can go up into these menus up top, like file, edit, and navigate, and stuff like that. But I like to like right click where I'm at. And then I'm going to choose new. I'm going to go down to where it says Java class here. And let's see. I'll just call it, uh, I don't know, hello world, I guess. Um, 
All right. And then, and it's telling me what the file name is going to be. Now, the of how I spelled it here, where it's like with a capital H and capital W, this is a pretty standard um, way to name a class in Java. This is how Java does it. This is conventions of naming your project, your, your files and so forth. So I'm going to click on finish. It's going to do some stuff. Um, here is this. I'm going to actually increase the font size here too, not only for you as a viewer to see, I actually just like a bigger font when I'm coding so I don't have to sit there and like squint, you know, it kind of drains my energy. So the way you can configure your NetBeans thing and, you know, maybe we'll see if we can make it look cooler too. I'm going to go up to Tools, uh, Options, and then let's see, there's a couple different areas. So there's like Editor, maybe go into. Um, I know that there's fonts and colors. I just wanted to see if it's somehow... Because sometimes they're, they're talking like the editor. It's like the IDE font and stuff. Um, I don't see it there. I'm going to, I guess, fonts and colors. Okay. So here, the font is monospace 13. That's the size of the font here. So if anything else, we'll just change this default font. And then click this triple thing here. And then it's currently 13. I'm going to make it bigger. So say, I don't know, 16. So it didn't even have 16 over here. But you can just type it up here. As long as like a regular kind of size value, you should be OK. I'm going to click OK here. Um, we can click OK. The font got a little bit bigger. So that's better to look at. Um, you can do a lots of other things in the options. You can actually change a theme. They actually have some pretty cool themes built in. Um, honestly, I wish they would just kind of make standard, but I'm not going to get into that right now. <clears throat> Pardon me, I was just drinking a little bit of water. So, um, what we're looking at here is the stuff in gray right here. These are referred to as comments. They have, they're not anything with code. You can type anything. You can be like, blah, 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 blah. Okay, it has no impact on your code. So with that being the case, this thing is just kind of giving you some like hints of like you can change like your templates of how you think do things and stuff, which is like when you create new files, this auto these auto comments pop up. So I'm gonna just gonna delete them just to save space. All right, and then here's my you know username on the system. I'm just gonna get rid of this just so we save some space here. Um, so this is how like the Java program starts out. And NetBeans, you know, it helps put this all together. Um, this package thing, it's just like a way to kind of put your code into like a little file. Think of it like a box, okay? That's all that this line is doing. Then down here, uh, to actually understand the syntax of what they're doing here, it takes a little more understanding. Later on, you'll kind of get it. The main thing is that <clears throat> this, uh, we called our program or I did, I called it Hello World with a capital H and then a capital W. It has to be the same thing here. You have to say Hello World, but don't put dot .java, all right? And then in here, I'll just press tab, okay? And then say we just have it say Hello World. So I'll go, you know, system dot out dot say print. I'll just start with print, I guess. And then Hello World. Okay, and this is how the code looks. You type it all like this with a capital S. All right, system. Was it? Give me some. Oh, you know what? Good call. So what I need to do actually before I even do that, I was like, why am I getting? Why am I getting the squiggly line already? As I know this line of code is valid. However, this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take this code. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut it out. What I need to do actually is do this long kind of intro thing here is I'm going to do this. Public static void main string args. Yeah, it, it sounds like I'm fancy, but this is like this. You have to have this 
section of your code. Like it, you need this in Java to do anything. Like this is your this is the starting point in Java. Okay. I actually have a whole thing with my other lectures that I go into to explain this and break this down a little bit more. But anyway, since I'm just showing a quick example of this stuff, if you copied paste this code or whatever, and you put this in there, um, you should be able to get things to run. Notice how I don't have the red squiggling lines anymore. I just copy and pasted this back in here. Um, and you have to have these curly braces in this section, and this is like wrapped around these curly braces, right? It's like Russian nesting dolls. Okay, so it sounds great. I'm, I like this file. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna save it. So I could either click on save all or whatever, or Control S, and then go up to say run. And currently my main project is this. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do just to make sure I'm gonna say clean and build. I, I just like doing this. It goes through this process to make sure everything is like. 100% um, with everything and then alright now the other thing that annoys me about this maven process is they got all these build status messages that kind of pop over everywhere and it gets annoying like right what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna actually run this code it will say hello world alright I'll show you where it does it, it this, this is my one critique here I'm gonna go up to here. I'm gonna go run, and then here I'm gonna run project. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Main class. <clears throat> okay, give it a sec. Give it a sec. Oh, it did work. A little tiny font. We, oh, we can also increase the font here. That's what I'm saying about the NetBeans IDE. You, you got to do this in like a couple different places. I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, it did say hello world here, but then like this nonsense build stuff is like kind of overshadowing basically our program here I don't know. whatever so there we go if you were following this of what I just did you congratulations you just created your first Java program all right and you got a lot of exploration to lots of different technologies and so forth um, before I move on though that I just want to touch over some other things okay so I just showed you how to install NetBeans you got it working from like ground zero okay but to be fair and just to kind of highlight a uh, lots of things you may want to explore so I was showing you Zulu okay and their usage of the open JDK right <clears throat> well there's also this thing there is the adopt open JDK so it's another project that does this uh, as well um, so I'm not trying to you know market services what I'm just trying to highlight you know uh, I like to teach people technologies so just be aware of these types of projects that are out there um, so this is a popular project as well to basically maintain um, the open JDK uh, technology and then so I showed you how to do things in NetBeans. Okay, so you're looking at NetBeans again. This is an IDE. The overall point of why an IDE is very useful is, look, look at what you're looking at here. I know that you can be a little confused by the interface and so forth, but this is the heart of the matter, is actually just looking at this stuff, is look at all the color coding. It's great, I love that. If I, if I say, click here <clears throat> it's checking you know little symbols pop up blah 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 if I click right next to this thing it's telling me where the the closing curly brace is that's a really helpful feature because like when you have say a thousand lines of code in one file and you're like wait is this curly brace matched up with this one or what, what, what's going on here like is it or I mean this one to this one like it's too it's too hard to see with just your eyeballs especially because like Java code um, you know you can get it all out of whack like you can make it be literally all on one line here and this will be a valid Java program okay it's not a good looking program but it will work so I just changed it all basically one line here and 
to include this stuff. All right. And I'll run this code again. Boom. Run the product. Um, that, oh, hello world. You don't believe that a change, I'll make it say hello world 2. Okay, hello world 2. I'm just pressing F6 to quickly do this. And then, boom. Hello world 2. Okay. So that's the thing. The thing with Java, the white spacing, meaning how the code looks with all the tabs and space characters and stuff like that, it usually doesn't really, really matter. Um, I'm going to press Control Z a bunch, like undo, or I could, I guess, click this thing. Because um, that's, this is a terrible way to program. Don't, don't have code that looks like this. It's really obnoxious to look at. Um, let's see, I do want that in there. There. We're back to where we, we were. Save that. Uh, just press Control S. Now, again, the overall point of why the IDE is useful to you. You have color coding. It matches up the curly braces. Um, it's picking out like there's blue letter, you know, letters here, and there's like dark black. Like there are reasons why there's different colors, which you'll learn about later. That jumps out to you, okay? To include even this portion right here, this is for to as a string, okay? Um, you can also change the colors. Uh, you can make it have a dark theme and and so forth. Um, <clears throat> the other thing too. If you have like crazy things going on in your code, like, I don't know, I'm just kind of type some gibberish here, blah, 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 all right. It's gonna be like, what did you just do? What is this nonsense, okay? Now, that's an obvious thing you can maybe see with your eyes, but if it was just like PRNT or something like that, like if you didn't have this squiggly line process, it may not be as obvious to you, especially if you have a lot more code going on, okay? So <clears throat> an IDE, is basically like, you know, Microsoft Word or, you know, if you prefer LibreOffice uh, Writer. Okay, it's, it's like a word editing program to let you know you basically misspelled something. Uh, and an IDE doesn't solve all of your problems, but at least it helps you out with writing your code, the syntax, okay, of valid code at least. Now, the logic of your code, that's, that's kind of more on you as the programmer, but for the most part, the syntax and stuff like that, syntax highlighting and, and such, that's why an IDE is very useful. You can also go into debugging. There's a whole thing that you can get into with all that. Um, and it helps you structure your code uh, quickly. You can look at files and rename things. It's very, that's why it's called an integrated development environment. It's very, everything's kind of all in one place to do things. Okay, um, and so the, but as I was saying, you don't really need an IDE to do anything. You actually could just do all this code here. Like this is a different format. Like this is different code than what I just showed you. Um, this is using what's referred to as Notepad. Okay, if you don't know what Notepad is, you, you should know. Um, because in this case, look, there's no color coding. There's no syntax, anything. It's just straight, straight text. All right. Um, to get to Notepad, if you don't know, open up this, you know, and search for, just start typing in N-O-T-E. It's going to know what you're going to ask for. Press enter. And then you can just type stuff in here. But you can't, there's no colors that you can set. You can change like the font. Okay. But it has no impact on actually doing anything. Like you make the font look gothic or whatever. But it changes it for everything. It's just like a visual thing that you might want to look at. But it doesn't actually change the underlying like code itself. <clears throat> Alright. So or like the, the text itself. This is not like Microsoft Word or or LibreOffice, okay? That it, 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 but Notepad is only it's just just characters. That's it. That's all it does. Um the, it can be still be useful. I'm not minimizing Notepad. It actually can be very powerful it, it, when you need it. Um, but you can actually write all of your Java code in something like this. You save it, and you can manually go into like the command line, get to eventually like I don't know Java C and stuff like that. Okay, because I installed Zulu, and I type Java C because that stands for the Java compiler. Okay, 
And I could go through this process to like make this code work. But anyway, I'm not going to get into all that. Moving on though, to highlight on some other aspects, I touched on, you know, we covered the Oracle JDK, the Open JDK, Azul's version of the Open JDK. They have different ones. I'm using the community one. There's also the Adopt Open JDK. All right. That's just for the JDK type technologies. That's just like to create the pro to have the tools available to create Java programs. Now, in addition to <clears throat> NetBeans, okay, or if you care, you could use Notepad. I would not recommend it. It gets annoying after a while if you're doing hardcore programming in Notepad. It's really annoying. It's good for quick and dirty things. Now, in addition to, to even though I do love NetBeans, I just want to let you know there's there's options here if you want to explore other IDEs for Java or other languages. Uh, so for instance, a very popular um, <clears throat> IDE is called Eclipse. All right. So their website is eclipse.org. I'm not going to go through the process of installing that. It's there's it's kind of similar to NetBeans. There's also uh, Atom. Okay. And the only thing here though is once you install Atom, you then have to go onto the basic their website again. And currently they kind of have it separated. You have to like search down uh, basically to install Java language support. Okay. So like there's like for instance, I think like this would what you'd want, this IDE Java. Um, I might be wrong. I'm not sure. I think so. I see like a lot of it's kind of weird. It's not on top. Anyways, you, you have to install basically a plugin thing for Atom. Um, it's not bad. I've used it uh, with Atom. I, I would I will just say like NetBeans can feel a little more f feature rich in some categories in this regard. Um, <clears throat> but Atom's a popular uh, IDE. There's also what's referred to as the IntelliJ. Um, this, by the way, IntelliJ is actually the the technology that the Android, um, like, to create Android programs that Google used basically the IntelliJ type, uh, their IDE type technology to, to make the Android um, SDK type uh, technology work. Um, that's why, like, if you use Android stuff and you look at IntelliJ, which also this company um, known as uh, JetBrains up here. A, if you're a Python programmer, there's also PyCharm, very popular. Um, anyways, you could definitely use IntelliJ. There's also, say you, you don't have, say you're working in some environment where either you can't install software or something like that, check it out. You can actually do Java development in your web browser. Look at this. I'm looking at, I'm probably not going to say this right, but like, Repl it. I don't know. I think it's supposed to be like. Uh, I'm not even going to try attempt to uh, explain the the whole thing of Repl it. Um, uh, I'm still kind of learning myself. Anyways, but you could use this in this case. You know how this works. I have it pulled up. That I'm just going to click run. Okay. This their website is repl. It if you can't see the U URL. And I just clicked on run. This is their main default thing that they have set up in here. And it says, hello world. The only thing is I actually wanted to show you <clears throat> the experience. So I built this little kind of capability to showcase like getting input from a user. So I'm going to paste this code in here. This is what I created. And then I'm going to click run again. <clears throat> And give it a moment, give it a moment, and here we go. So my code says in here, it says, what is your name? So that's why it's prompting right here for the user to type something. So I'm going to type my name, uh, William, press enter, boom, it says, hello, William, because down here it says, hello, and then like, you'll learn later, there's this, it's called a variable, the user, they put the, whatever they typed got thrown into this variable called user. 
and then later on I put it in this line of code. And that's why it says hello William here. All right. I just want to show you the experience of what it's like to create your code here. The only thing is I don't really fully 100% trust websites to like, you know, not crash and things like that. So one tip I definitely would recommend, especially if you're dealing with some like important project that you're working on and you have it all in your browser code and then eventually like, boom, your internet crashes or whatever halfway through. And you're like, wait a minute, where did my code go? Um, but I'd recommend you can use this web browser based IDE. It's very good actually. It's got syntax highlighting and so forth. Um, but actually a good pro tip, huh? you can just use a notepad over here, copy paste, you know, like save your code over a notepad. You can do lots of coding over here and then eventually like copy paste a backup to notepad and save that. So that way, you, you know, you have like a plan B in case something goes wrong. All right. Does that make sense? Um, you can also like uh, sign up for an account and save things. I would still do a notepad old school kind of backup process just in case. Likewise, another option just to kind of explore the field here. There is what's referred to as online GDB. Um, they have uh, basically these IDEs for different languages. And in this case, this is for Java. This is their standard one with Hello World. I'll just click Run. Their thing shows up on the bottom here. All right, and it says Hello World. Now, I've already have in memory uh, uh, like the, the code that I created before to ask the user's name. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna overwrite this. Paste this in here. Um, I'm gonna click Run. It's a similar process. You know, I just wanna let you know you can, you can get user input and things like that. Just through like these web browser IDs. Name is William, press enter, boom, and then the program stop. That's all I wanted the program to do for now. Okay. Now, I'll also show you that you're not just limited or, um, I don't know about limited, but like there's, a, there's other options to basically experiment with Java programming. So I honestly have not used this before. I just pulled it up because it's got pretty good ratings. I don't, I can't vet this and things like that. I guess it has ads, you know, whatever. But um, it's called aid-ide. I'm just showing you that like, say all you have is like an, an Android phone or a tablet. You're not out of luck. You could just, you could still do this. Um, <clears throat> and I think maybe, you know, uh, you know, certain other environments, like you may be able to pull this in. So you could either use this. I don't know. I don't, again, I have not used this personally. And because of that, I'll show you another option here. This is from, I have not used this myself either, but I'm just showing you that there's another pro, uh, program on uh, for Android called J Studio. And, you know, you can see some screenshots of how this process looks here. Looks like Java code and like run the program, I guess, and stuff like that. Okay. Um, yeah. There's also, if you use uh, like an iPhone or like an uh, iPad and stuff like that. Well, again, I have, I don't, I've never used, I have not used this. But I'm just pulling up that there are options to explore out there. So even if these aren't the great programs, so there's uh, Jadona, and you know here's like screenshots of the pro, like what your experience is. Um, and I checked that the recent versions are have been updated recently. So at least I know that that this is maintained or at least posted recently. There's also the Pico compiler. Um, it says Java 9, which is still fine because Java uh, eight, uh, even though that might sound old, is actually referred to as a long-term support solution. So Java nine, like that, it's you know, it's still in the ballpark basically. Um, and so this is another option to create the code. You can see some like Java code over here. Again, uh, play around, see what works, which ones you don't like. I don't, um, you know, I, I haven't used these, uh, but I'm just there's options out there. Uh, that it's not just NetBeans. There's lots of different uh, ways to basically get into Java coding. Okay. Um, 
And the, the thing I think actually with these types of environments, so for instance, I think they actually kind of like prepackage like the JDK thing. Like so you don't have to like actually figure out how some way to download some open JDK thing on your iPhone. Um, I think it's all kind of just built in. So I could be wrong, but it, that's my understanding at least. So I just want to kind of explain how this works. Um, yeah, that's all I got. I hope you uh, you learned a lot. Um, so yeah, the, the two main technologies to kind of watch out for is the difference between, you know, the Oracle JD, JD, okay, type JDK, all right? which I'm not saying it's bad technology, it's just more kind of locked down, okay? It's a very stable technology. There's nothing wrong with the stability of it or, or the capability of it. It's more of like if you care about open source um, technologies or something like that, this may not be the way to go, um, you know. So I'm a bigger fan of the Open JDK project because I'm an open source advocate, but I just want to, you know, highlight that there are uh, options in this case. And then, as I showed you before, here this is also maintained. And I'll scroll down, and you can see it's. I'll zoom in a bit. Down, down, down. The Open JDK is maintained by Oracle. All right, so it's not like I'm going against their technology. It's their technologies. Um, that they, you know, they got from uh, uh, Sun Microsystems back in the day. Um, but anyways, so you have the JDK, which is the Java Development Kit. That's to be able to create programs, which is different than, like if we went to java.com, the Java Runtime Environment, okay? Um, Remember, I click this and it says JRE. That's the Java runtime environment. The JDK, if you install a JDK, by the way, um, that the JDK actually contains a Java runtime environment. Okay. So it it's, a, it's an environment to create and run programs, just to be clear. Um, but that's the main difference. You have the JDK and then the JRE. All right. So... That's all I got. I hope you learned a lot and hope you have fun uh, programming. All right. Have a good night.